man i stretch my hands upon you in the name of jesus you are drinking of the wine of the spirit let it open you to a new face a new face take that grace now in the name of jesus christ what does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to this and more are shrouded in this mystery called the way of God. He can show men his ways. We can feast on the patterns of the spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life. Prayer point number one, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Someone cry to your maker. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Open my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Zaria, are you praying? Abuja, are you praying? Koinonia Global. Cry. You may be a man of God, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist. Hear me. We are in the days of his power. There is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive The resurrected King Is resurrected me In your name I will rise From the ashes of defeat Hear me, listen, I ask you the first question, that is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two, do you believe that the anointing of the spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men that this engracing we call the anointing it says i have found my servant david psalm 89 and verse 20 that with my holy oil have i anointed him i've anointed him whom my hand will lift are we together now 21 it says that the enemy shall not exert upon him Verse 23, it says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The last verse, it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn, his horn is his authority, his influence, his relevance shall be exalted. That's why I raised that song. In your name I come alive. To declare your victory, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hear me. You see, the thing about the dealings of God with men, please listen carefully. The thing about the dealings of God with men 
is that at any level you can start with God and I'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state in pride transformation is an impossibility you have to first acknowledge that I am limited may be a man of God may be a businessman but my current frame of reference is not pro is not producing the possibilities then God can come to you with his mercy when I cry to God I cry as though I have not known him I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore the current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming it will take superior manifestations of the power of God if it is the nations we want to take uh -uh. We must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity. We have tried, but not enough. The current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ, I submit to you, it is not notable enough to compel the nations. It says where the carcasses are. Do you know what it means to make diplomats, to make nations, to make kings? To make people from the Middle East, you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus? And nothing happens. When nothing happens over a long time, the devil now comes and says, Why don't you try me? You have tried the rest. Jesus being part of the rest. And he said, Tulio, let's go to the village. You have tried. Man of God, I appreciate you. I know God is using you mightily, but the emergency requires another form. To come into attention and the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties see this is the same thing that happens when demons come watch this watch this watch this watch this let me teach you something now watch this a man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the holy spirit seeks to attach himself that's called demon possession are you getting me the will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything this man can be born again demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties so between the spirit and the body there is an interruption are you getting what i'm saying now so he can be born again yet anger is still killing him he can be a man of god yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues genuine tongues real tongues and you are saying Christ this man of God is fake no he's not fake something is happening in the soul realm the salvation of his soul has not been perfected so the Bible says it this way the weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through God are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds Casting every imagination, every high thing that dwells in that soul realm, and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen. So the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it. The difference is more alignment, more yieldedness, more translation. So it makes you reflect the heavenly. This is what happened to Enoch. Enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime, this, his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality. You see the concept of immortality that many preachers, people like Kobus, great man I love and honor, he's gone to be with the Lord. He got the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of his manifestation. So he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, you stop aging. That is sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body life. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body 
That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Let's see, guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let rush. Help us, Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. 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 Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministry? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen. I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the Spirit in my life. I've never seen it before. Never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I needed to do. And one day, there was a lady who came from somewhere. And I prayed, you know, we bought food for her. And then she, I prayed for her. She got born again. And I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just by faith. And I just laid my hands. And it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw somebody moving back. I had barely touched her. And that's how she just went on the floor. Ah. I said, oh God, what, what is this good news that I'm seeing? So be excited when you begin to see. Don't just be childish about this. Because some of you, once you see that, you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small. So that the anointing will enter fast. You now go and look for small, small ladies and try to throw them. I remember years ago there was a gentleman, okay, the power of God will touch you now, now, and the lady is not doing like this, but refusing to fall. Then you put one finger, you not fall, two fingers, you are doing madness. The agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with Him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Panchin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we have like, um, we just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually, gradually, gradually. Hallelujah. Let me use medical terms. Have you seen times when medical people, a woman wants to give birth, right? And they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough. Is that true? Is there a baby? Yes. Does he want to come out? Yes. Why is he not coming out? The mother. Right? And sometimes they have to do all kinds of things. Worse come to worse when nothing is wrong, they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do tears for you for this destiny to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what He's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So, the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the Word of God. So, more of heaven can find expression through our lives. 
But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will speak. Not just speak in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketun. She's still alive in this day. When that woman is coming for a crusade, immediately they spot her car. That's how healings and deliverance happen. I was shocked. I didn't know there's such a person in the earth. Ah! The day I saw that, I said, my goodness. Ah, this is heaven. This is what we are saying. This woman stepped into the crusade ground. And my goodness, the kind of miracles. I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not. You are just afraid of the pastor, so you say yes. Provable miracle. Wounds that will close right away, not magic. Right away, wounds, clothing. I said, my goodness, oh God. So you still have men and women. And ladies, do you know you have an advantage over men? Because of your configuration. Your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized. Because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God, comma, and has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion, and intellect that has come into agreement, you no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment. And a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation, is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, work out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, work out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Work it out. The work out there. It says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, comma, work out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency, what is the work there? It's the name given to your participation, your cooperation with the Holy Spirit. In your fasting, you are working it out. I'll be sharing with us. In your prayer, and all the points I'm about to give you here, you are working it out. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. The Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Where it's like a cloth, put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? By so doing, make no provision for the flesh. That means there will be space for the flesh until you put on. That put on, the transformation is like wearing a new garment. Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. 
Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit? Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man. Exactly becomes the degree of access. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life. That means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life. Not how much you carry, but how much will find expression. So you can carry God as we all believe, but you never see that God show up in your life. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified? In my life, Today, can you sing that song? Lord, in my life, in my life, be glorified, be glorified in my. Hallelujah. So what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. How true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in the lie that you are unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. Show yourself in my life and in my heart and with my song. Oh, be mad. Oh, that's the song you must sing. That's the song of transformation. Be magnified. Break the wall. Break the boundary. Be magnified. Oh Lord. Be magnified. Oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. St. Patrick, a great man that lives, a man had died, brothers and sisters, six months. She was dead. And St. Patrick came and said, Where is the grave? True story. When they showed the grave, he signed his signature on it. St. Patrick. He said, Dickie, they brought the man out alive. In this end, men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods. I said with you about ancient, I study a lot about revival. 
I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and threw it and completed it. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuman, she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating. She didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. E.W. Kenyon, men who allowed the possibilities of God, you don't die less than 70 in his church, he will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident, a car climbed his leg, broke his bones, and all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him, because he sees through his eyes. And he looked at him, allowing heaven to pass through your eyes. And the bones started making noise. We say it today like mystics. But men, the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? Imagine brothers and sisters, Elijah, he was talking with God on the mountain and they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire with chain consumed them. And they went back physically. Daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled. Joshua told the son to stand still. There is something we are missing in our generation. And Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed man. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind, imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space and see the little things that trickle of His presence that happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish, I wish. That's the reason why God transports men from region to region. He's transporting Himself through them. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop and God is going there through the degree we have given Him. He expects to do great things, but He wants to do more. Unfortunately, Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants. So probably, there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die, but I may not be able to raise him. And I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You will be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just put himself. The hey guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said, I am in the straight retreat. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay, but I'll stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John, his mind was so alive, they threw him in boiling pot and nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited. Mighty but limited. Mighty but limited to you. What is your challenge? Write it. That means your assignment and your task. 
to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth that's your singular challenge that's your singular task contend for transformation give God space through your life my goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression to me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously i look forward to a time when there will be accidents and i will just come and god will say thank you i've always wanted to raise them but i need an access point joshua selman be there hey see the bible says you shall lay hands on the sick it didn't say you shall say be healed just take me near that person and you will be healed God wants to go to your home but he wants to travel to you transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with God unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of Christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of God are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of Christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic? So how are you changed? What, what, what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly? Number one, the first key to transformation is a life of prayer. The first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly. Pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, that transformation is happening. Whether you know it or not. That's why I encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak. Join the prayer department for one month. So that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life. Pray in the night. Pray in the day. Separate days for prayer. Prayer in the spirit is one of God's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly. It's one of the systems through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself. Prayer is like molting. The way reptiles, snakes, molt. You know what happens when they want to expand, right? They come out of their current cell. It's a difficult process. It's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands. And they have to crawl through. And when they come out, you now see the cocoon. And the snake is thick before it now crystallizes. That's how you grow. So while you are praying, investments of prayer. One hour, two hours, three hours. Sometimes you just dedicate the time, morning till night. Worship and you just pray. With fastings, of course, periodically, not every time. And something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounter for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i want to explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 of 1st Corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies the 
will stop enlarges his spiritual capacity. Number two, Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27. The Bible says, For we know not what to pray for as we ought to. It says, For the Spirit, He makes intercession for us. He searches the mind of God. Right? He brings an intermingling. It's like a salt covenant. He says, Let us reason together. It happens in the place of prayer. Romans 8, 26 and 27. And then Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Prayer grants you access to light and illumination. Call unto me, and I will answer, and show thee great and mighty things, not small and meager things. Great and mighty things. Let me tell you, look at me. There is no amount of Bible study that will substitute for prayer. Do you know why many people are not really getting revelation? Because what you are doing is study alone and not prayer. You can study, but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you. Make no mistakes about it. You can sit down and study forever. Get up and carry the letter that kills. Go and teach and not bless people. But true illumination is in the place of prayer. And when you add prayer with fasting, it's like a time bomb. It's a sense that your life breaks forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily. Is this not the fast that I've commanded? That means there is a type you can do on your own. Hunger strike. Right? Religious fast. But there is a type I've commanded. And if you do that, your life will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily. James chapter 5 verse 16. The fervent, not joking and trivial prayer, the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous are much. Amplified says, is dynamic in its working. So when you pray, when you pray in the spirit, you are enlarging your capacity. You see why we pray. You see why we believe in the ministry of prayer. It's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast. We are not trying to add to what Jesus has done. We are opening up to receive all that he has brought. Number two. The second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word. So here we have the ministry of prayer. And then insight and revelation from the word. Notice I didn't just say the word of God. It's for a reason. Because if I say the word of God, many of us have been reading Bible. But the insight and the revelation, the illumination you get from the word of God. And then in addition to that, our obedience to the word of God is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us. Listen, listen. The word of God is like a bag that carries treasures. Your obedience to the principles of the world opens up the bag and releases the treasure inside. You know how granite is? It's in a shell. That's principally how the word of God is. When you act, your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you. So it's not enough to just get insight and revelation. You must be willing to obey to the latter. I wrote something here that is interesting. Revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion. Revelation. When you have revelation, insight in the Bible, and you do not have the willingness to obey it, you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion. A few scriptures. Hmm. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Let's look at it very quickly. We we'll look at three scriptures, Proverbs 24 verse 30, and then Acts chapter 8, 29 to 30. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Hallelujah. It says, 24 verse what? 30. I think I may have made a mistake. Okay, let's go to Acts 8 verse 29 to 30. While I look that up. Acts 8. It was the story the story of the utopian Enoch. Watch this. That guy 
could not experience God in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding. And when the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to the chariot, that's it. And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said, What? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it, do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and plan scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22, verse 22. Very powerfully. Job 22, 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his word in your heart. Receive it. Don't just read it. Receive it. Let light enter you. The entrance of thy word giveth light. There is an enlargement. It said, write prosperously because of truth. The last scripture, John chapter 1 verse 12. This is the one that blew my mind. The Bible says, As many as received him, who is the him? The word. But as many, not everybody will receive the word. Many will read the word. Many will admire the word. But very few will receive it. He said, but as many as received that word, that word gives them power to become. Power to become. Power to become. When you receive the word, it gives you power to become what it says. Not when you read it. When you receive it and diligently obey the principles, it transforms you to become. So the word about tithing guarantees your financial future. When you receive it, you receive it by acting upon it. And satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it. Then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly. Number three, the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship. A life of intense worship. Intense worship. Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein in excess. He said, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let me tell you something about worship. I've studied it very well. Worship brings the manifest presence of God to your life and your territory. Worship is a magnet. There are three levels of God's presence. There is His omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. There is what I call His Emmanuel dimension. That when two people are gathered in a place, He is there in their midst. God with us. But there is His Shekinah. His manifested presence. That dimension is invoked in worship. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Let's hurry up. Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. Second Chronicles 5. It says, And also the Levites, which were singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For the Lord is good, for His mercy endureth forever. That what happened? The house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Next verse. The Shekinah of God came and rested there. So that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud. It said, For the glory of the Lord has filled the house. When you maintain a life of intense worship, the glory of God comes. Your body begins to shake. A literal vibration at His presence. And you are lying down there. 
spoken in that presence for hours. See, this is how to walk powerfully in the anointing and the glory of God. That the cloud, the glory of the Lord, let me tell you, when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life, you won't even be able to stand up. That's the kind of sicknesses will melt away. Infirmities will go away. The majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you. Maintain a life of worship. Put worship songs in your phones. Remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activity. Come and meet the worship team. Let them do a selection of spoken worship songs for you. Just lie down in your room. You may be sleeping normally, but let the songs just play. Sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing. No words to them. And you are just spoken. And after a while, the shekinah of God, like a hand resting upon eggs. Remember what I said about the hand. A hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek. How much more the glory of God when it rests upon you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16 verse 25. The Bible tells us that Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison. And the Bible says they prayed and they sang. They sang praises to God. And the prisoners had them. He had them. Oh my God. That's why we worship a lot in Koinonia. It's the secret of the presence. It's the secret. Look at every man that walks in the anointing. Every man that walks in the miraculous. Benny Hinn will worship for hours. Dr. Paul Enensha would worship for hours. Men who know God. Men who carry the anointing. Catherine Kuhlman. All these great people. They would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests, wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves. Your job is to get God to the scene and step out. Our worship team, all of them have been trained to understand. The assignment of Koinonia worship team is not to entertain Koinonia. The very assignment of Koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of God finds expression. That's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we are going to pray we are out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but I want you to pray with all your heart I like you to pray and ask the Lord and say Lord bring me to that place where the mind of Christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space. Go ahead and pray. I'm willing to give the God of miracles space. The God of breakthroughs. The God of signs and wonders. The God of impartation. The God of salvation and revival. 
Hallelujah. Tear yourselves into two, please. You're going to pray. I'd like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Heaven, heaven, invade our mind, invade our soul, invade our soul, invade our body. Let the fullness of the capacity, the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. You're going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space. I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life after the order of Benihim, after the order of Ketrin Kuman. That prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul, after the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick. My territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny, no playing games. The sick must be healed through my life, the oppressed must be delivered, sinners must be saved, sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life, I give you faith. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first, the gates of hell. The solution to that is have an understanding of your authority. And exercise it. The second is the limitation that your mind gives you. The solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word. We are going to pray. There are forces that are vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space. There are all kinds of forces, but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones. You love them. Some of them don't know what you know. Lift your voice and cry. In the next three minutes.
Permit me to raise one more prayer point. I know we are out of time, but this is burning in my spirit. Look up. Hallelujah. God is doing things. Fire is burning in this place. Listen. Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not going. Nothing was happening. They had the heart. They had the mandate. But they were spiritual world. And they were fasting together with the pastors. Lord, what is it? And the Lord told him, come out. And he came out. And he said, look. And he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud. He said, this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry. There are people who are genuine. But the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Forces of darkness. Forces of darkness. Lift up your head. Forces of delay. Lift up your head. Forces of darkness. Lift up your head. Forces of lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your head. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those things will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. 
Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gate, then they will open. When you confront the gate that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gate, stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gate, killing your family, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited Him. And the Spirit cries. The Spirit cries. If any man will give me space, he said, Go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above in the name of Jesus. Every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason may it transfer to life today. Hallelujah. Children have disappeared. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Oh no. Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away. It can keep that mountain there forever or start time. I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. What are you ignoring? Some of you, your family members have ignored you. That's why things have not changed. They have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life. So every time you step in, your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace. But they have refused to acknowledge it. Brothers and sisters, although they are your mothers and fathers, things will never change until they come into that recognition. Please rise upon your feet. This prayer session we are entering, I want you to pray with all your heart. Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding. The grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I'd like you to lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, I know that the mountain before me can leave. I just don't know how to let it go. But I want it to go in this year. Lift your voice and pray. This mountain standing before me. There is a way out. Pray. Lift your ministry. Lift your academics. Lift your job. Lift everything before God. Lord, I know. I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight, I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God. Show me what I need to do. Yeah. 
Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sikabaratos koto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se telebra di kete kosto to prada na bala na bala na bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results. Be very sincere with God and say, Lord, there has to be a way out of this. Lift your voice and pray. Please take it serious, Koinonia. Lord, I've not seen the anointing in my life. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I prayed and fasted, nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their mind. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academics. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life. In strategic areas, I ask for grace. I ask for grace. Pray. Grace. Lord, I will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all. I will sit with this issue of powerlessness. This issue of lack of church growth. This issue of not having a message to preach. This issue of failure all around. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got. And one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to Mark 1, 2, 3. And it was like an anointing that came. I knew I had gotten it. I knew I had gotten it. When people talk about prosperity, most of the scriptures is Deuteronomy 8, 18. I've not gotten light from that scripture. God, and God will take you through that word to somewhere else. That becomes your access point out. Are we together? Two more prayer points. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight. Every principle that should have opened a door for me, I ignored it out of pride. I ignored it out of ignorance. I, I ignored it out of complacency and laziness. Tonight, oh God, I cry. 
Tonight, oh God, I cry. Pray, pray. Take it, 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 take and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You have ignored the word. And you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give. Or you have been in close touch with the word. But just growing in knowledge without revelation. Revelation is not knowing what scripture has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. God said it's not revelation, it's prophecy. It takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God says it's prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a, revela- into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamic to its manifestation. There is, a, there is an alignment there is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls, genuinely, and answer prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3, there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness at the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery. That any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine at the stars. He says, He that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon, speaking of wisdom, said, With me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, during who riches and righteousness. He said, By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Just for winning souls, you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom. And many of us want to be wise, we want to do all of that. And you watch sinners go to hell. You are coming from meeting and you watch people around. You are not passionate, you are embarrassed. The Bible says, he that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day, he is before the father making advocacy for you. He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in any way your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where His heart is. God is in the business of making sure men is come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind here. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, 
let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. So, so, transform. So, genuinely say. So, established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. See, if you say you are growing spiritually, ask yourself, what parameter am I using to measure my growth? If you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of them, and you are fooling yourself, at the end of it you will cry. A small child who may not know much, but do much with what he or she knows, will be standing and excelling. Just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking English, and they will write exam and get 40. And one obedient student he follows the examples and taught every. He may not be so smart, but he's just too obedient to be average. The ways of the kingdom have been simplified. Follow it with total obedience and conviction, and walk your way to a life of wonder. Do you know, especially for pastors, many pastors are stubborn. I tell you, they never listen. They never walk. This part of this humility, the precepts of God, they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years. So they find out they are preaching more, they are fasting more, there's no result. Whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out. You see another man of God just come up with a heart panting after God. And you, you will look around his life and say, where is the result? They are spiritual laws. You don't guess them. They are there. You follow them or you keep grumbling up and down. Let me pray for you before I make the altar call. Or let me even make the altar call first. Please look up. I want to make the altar call. I'm very happy when I make altar calls. You know why altar calls are important? Altar calls are important because they give the people an opportunity to respond to God. There are people outside. There are people inside waiting right now for the man of God to just make a call and let them come. Because as you teach, the Spirit of God is convicting people. There are two sets of people who should run out here right now. Many inside and outside. I spoke about ignoring certain laws. Could it be that this is what you have ignored? You have ignored Jesus. Trying to live a life outside Him. You have ignored Jesus. He looks like one of those spiritual leaders to you. Tonight, if you will only make that adjustment and embrace Him as your Savior, that begins the beginning of a journey towards victory. And there are people who at one time were holding Jesus Christ very seriously. But at a point you felt other things were serious. And I'm not just talking of backsliding. And you just left the whole thing tonight. There is room for you. These two people, I'll just count one to ten very quickly. You are here. You are outside. The Spirit of God is talking to you. Don't add you. Make your way to the front. The Bible says, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Begin to celebrate them. They are coming. God bless you. God bless you. Many of them are coming inside and outside. The devil is a liar. Leave your seats and come. Forget about your friends. God bless you. Make your way to the front. Man of God, I'm tired of the way my life is. I don't want to pretend I'm making progress. Whereas I'm deceiving myself. Something you are ignoring may be responsible for the predicament in your life. Clear the way for them outside as they come. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Keep slapping, please, Koinonia.
Some of us are still sitting. The moment the Holy Ghost starts talking to you and says you are the one the man of God is talking about, you can hear his voice. Leave your feet and make your way to the front. Young and old, say, I'm tired. I can't be the God of my life. I'm ready to hand over my life to one. Listen, you have to pray. I like you to leave your seat and come. Say, Lord, I managed my life by myself for 20 years. And here's my conclusion. I mismanaged it. I need to hand it over to one who can manage my life for me. Make your way to the front. Join them quickly, please. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. There are still one or two people outside. Join them quickly. Let's sing that song. Savior, Savior, we can move on now. My God is mighty today. He is mighty forever, forever, all for our salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. One more time. giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Listen, there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. When we're giving you an award, you ask us to open our eyes. There is nothing you have done. There's no way you have lived that God will run away from you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are standing face to face with destiny. Time never changes anything. It's a decision. And you are making a very serious decision. Don't make it an emotional decision. Please lift your right hand. Jesus is in this place and you are talking to him. Don't just think of someone in heaven. He's right here with us. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Those there, you can make sure you, you join this. Lord Jesus, I ask you tonight to help me. I've heard your word and I'm tired of living my life my own way. I come before you broken, humbled by your word. I make Jesus Lord of my life. Say it. I receive forgiveness of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare from today that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of the world is broken over me. I break free from wrong associations that keep me in sin. From today, I move forward ever and backward never. My sins are forgiven. I am the righteousness of God. Help that lady under the anointing. I'm a new person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for this once. I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray you will never, never go back to the world again. The appetite for the flesh, the appetite for sin is broken in your life. And I pray that the Holy Ghost will take over your life in a very strange way. He will make you mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, some of you will go back and delete all those junks from your phone. You will call some people and tell them, I love you, but this is the last time you will ever see me again. I've made a serious decision for Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, let me just encourage you quickly before you go. It's not enough to get born again and go back to those wrong associations. Some of you know the people you have left. It's important for you to be grafted into the house of God. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God will flourish in the courts of our God. You don't get born again and go back and those guys mock you and give you one week and still destroy you. Cut away from them. When, you see, when you come to church, you are serious with God, you will join a workforce and have new friends. New friends who love Jesus and are serious. Praise the Lord. 
I bless you in the name of Jesus. You will never go back to your old ways in Jesus' name. Sir, what they go come. I don't know you, but the Lord is giving you a new beginning. Right? I'm seeing that there is a cause of darkness. There's deliverance happening to you from the time you came. Huh? There's been a lot of struggle in your life. There are things I cannot tell you now, but the Lord is changing your story forever. This is the greatest decision. Not just going to a man of God who prays for you. When you surrender to Jesus Christ, some things will leave. They came with the old nature. So they will pack their load and go at once. I pray for you. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So please make sure that you are grafted in the house of God. May God bless all those who invited them in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to follow the lady waving her hand. She will have your details and I promise she will follow you up. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Be careful with those under the anointing. Just walk gently. Please let's lift our hands as I speak over our lives very quickly. Son of man, can these bones leave? He said, only thou knowest. He said, prophesy. In the name of Jesus. It is important to speak. Words are powerful. They place something on your life. And it compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. I want you to understand what is happening. You see, when you speak over people, you are not motivating them. It's like a spell you are casting on them. When it comes upon them, it compels their environment to respond to them in a certain way. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, a new dimension of favor. I speak it over your life. A new dimension of favor. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A new level of favor. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Everything you have struggled with from January to now, I declare within one week, within seven days, it must bow to the name of the Lord. I prophesy over your life between now and the seven days, between now and Friday, it must bow to the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever is holding your breakthrough, I compel them to release it to you. Whoever is holding your breakthrough, I compel them to release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every family represented here, that the devil is manipulating them and causing the trouble at home to disturb your peace here. I release angels to your home to judge the hands of evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. That grace that makes a man honorable like Jabez. May it come upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's too early for us to begin to struggle spiritually. Anyone struggling spiritually here. Dead prayer life, dead word life, no more fasting, no praying, no seriousness, no listening to teachings. I restore that pattern right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I restore that pattern right now. Everything that is dead in your hand comes alive now. Everything that is dead in your hands comes alive now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what has disappointed you from January till now, but I changed that report. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that should have happened in January and is yet to happen, we manipulate time. And we bring it into your future. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe what I'm telling you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you. From tonight. As you open your Bible. It will be as if you've never read it before. Every verse you open up to. Will be mysteries upon mysteries. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are trusting God for specific messages and books to give you direction. You will see them in dreams. You will see those materials in your dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone being eyed here by the spirit of death, I cause that spirit. You have no grounds to affect anybody's life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus thanks. Lift your hands and just honor him. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. We believe the word of the Lord has come with so much graces and with so much power reaching you all the way from this part of the earth. And like Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and in verse 5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and much assurance. Let me pause there. I believe the word of the Lord which you have received from the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, has been a mighty blessing to you. It didn't just come with word alone, it came with so much power. The revelation of the mind of the Lord, knowing the intent and the will of God for your life, it matters so, so much. And I believe convictions have been stirred in your heart because Paul said, it didn't just come with word, but in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Do well to keep your spiritual life updated every time. That is the reason why, by the message of God, Reflector Hub TV has been mandated to this space, bringing you the consistent will and mind of the Lord through His servant, Apostle Jesus Selman. I would like you to do well to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and also strike the notification bell so as to stay in touch with our regular and constant uploads so as to set your spirit man on fire. God bless you. Love you so much.